Welcome back everyone to a top 10 video. Today is my top 10 favourite expansions for board games. Now expansions for games can add a lot of things. They can add complexity, they can add new concepts, new mechanics, they can make the game more complex, more replayable. But these are ones that I find are almost essential for certain games. And these are some of my favourite ones that I've had over the years. The first expansion on this list is for Arkham Horror the Car Game, and this is the Dunwick Legacy. Now, Arkham Horror the Car Game is a fantastic horror uh, car game based on the works of HP Lovecraft. Cooperative game, great mechanics, great story, great RPG elements. But for those who have brought the core box, you may find that the content is pretty lackluster. In fact, when I brought the core box, I was disappointed. I found that playing the game um, the first few scenarios were fine, it was really fun, it was very thematic, it felt great. But I was limited on my cards, on my what I could progress, on just the story elements. It felt very over and done with. And it left me for a while not wanting to play Arkham Horror for a long time. And I heard people saying that, get the full campaign, get the first release of Dunwick Legacy, it's fantastic. And I was like, I don't want to, I don't want to pay for a, a full campaign. The problem with this is, you don't just pay for the full box, you've got to pay for the full box and six individual Mythos packs. Now they have released a full campaign and investigator expansion separately, which is a really great improvement. But I would recommend this set so much. If you like um, horror games, if you like card games, cooperative games, if you like uh, HP Lovecraft lore mythology, and if you have alcohol the card game or think of getting alcohol the card game and you think it is to me, it, it would be great. But with this uh, expansion, it makes it so much better. It adds so much to the game. It's almost like Arkham Horror becomes a full game with this release. This is for a few reasons. The first is it adds a lot more, obviously, more investigators and a lot more player cards. From this, just this one release alone, your your player card library will be so much bigger. You'll have so much more choice in deck building and progress and progression. You'll notice a change instantly. Your characters have more flexibility. You can build decks a lot better, a lot stronger. You upgrade your cards, you have more to use, more cards to choose from. Investigators this campaign are really, really good too. But also the story, having a full, long campaign is really good. And it's especially fun for those who are fans of the original story. You know, trying to summon Yogg's of Thoth and it all going wrong. And this is like the the professors and doctors from the first, from that old story, coming back to finish the job kind of thing and do it again. And there's a lot of branching paths and narrative choices and where your story can go. I mean, there's at least four or five endings, I think, in this campaign. There's so many ways routes can take. And it makes the Arkham it makes Arkham Horror such a full, complete game. In fact, I think just owning the core set and this release alone makes Arkham Horror just a full big game with hours of replay value. Number nine is Spirecrest for Everdell. Now Everdell is a cute, cuddly, um, wonderfully drawn, fantastic theme, um, work placement, resource management game. But at its core, it is a gateway game and it's quite simple. You do two actions on your turn, collect most points and win. It's a great game, but for those who want a little bit more, a bit more depth, a bit more strategy, a bit more complexity, I recommend Spirecrest. So there is a few expansions to get for Everdell, and I often get asked which is the best one. And I always suggest Spirecrest. Pilbrook and um, Balthair are great. Pilbrook adds the water sideboard, the pearls and the sort of water denizen cards, which, which are fun, but it doesn't add enough really, it doesn't feel like you get much in that release. Balfair is great, you get a few more cards, you get the player boards, you get the marketplace area, but that again doesn't feel like it's adding much, compared to Spirecrest. Now Spirecrest is a lot more complex. If you're playing this game for the first time, or you've got kids who play this game and they aren't quite used to complex games, this adds a lot more to it. In fact, the game does actually suggest that if you play your expansions, use Spirecrest and Spirecrest only, don't combine other expansions because it's a bit more complex. This is because it adds a few new things, it adds weather cars, the sort of trail area, expedition area down the bottom down there, more scoring options, it adds a lot more rules to the game, more changes. But in this way, it makes the game a lot more fun, it adds more depth, more strategy, you've got to plan more. The weather cards, for instance, will change, they'll make things cost more and change the effects on the board and stuff, so it makes it a lot harder for you to actually plan what you're going to do. Rather than be a simple place to work at, get a resource, play a card kind of game, you've got to think now, you've got to think, can I do that? Is that going to cost you more? Weather cards stop me, I've got to be careful for this now, I've got to change what I'm going to do. So it does add a lot more to a kind of simple game. It makes the game, it changes Everdell from a sort of simple, happy, 
user-friendly game to a fully-fledged, complex strategy game. Next up, it is Wingspan Oceana. Now, there are two expansions of Wingspan, with one on the way, um, Oceana and the European. Now, the European is fine. It adds a lot more birds and more bonus cards, but that's pretty much all it does. Oceana, on the other hand, adds a lot more. First of all, the biggest thing is a Nectar token. Now, Nectar acts as a wild resource, a very powerful resource, makes scoring get a lot higher. But also, you've got to spend it for the end of the round. If you spend it by the end of the round, it's discarded. Also, the player boards are different too, different abilities. The exotic birds, a lot of new birds, and also new, more eggs and more bonus cards. So it just adds a, a nice bit more to a game. Now, Wingspan has a lot of replay value from the bonus cards and the vast number of birds. But if you want a bit more, if you're getting a bit stale Wingspan and you want to add a little bit more spice to the mix and make it more replayable, I highly recommend getting Oceana. It adds just so much more to the game. It's a small box, it's very cheap, doesn't require too much. The net mechanic is quite simple, not too hard to understand, but it does add a lot more to an already great game. Next on this list is Civilization New Dawn Terra Incognita. Now, Civilization New Dawn is a strategy game based on the video game, the same name, where you must choose an empire and build and spread and conquer and diplomacy and gain resources and collect wonders and, you know, basically have combat. It's a good game. It's a very good game. But it does lack a few things, a few little errors here and there. And all the errors of New Dawn are fixed in this expansion. What Terra Incanita does is, first of all, it adds a fifth player option, which is great. Uh, it doesn't feel tapped on. It, it adds more length to the game, obviously, but it, it feels natural. It, bl it blends it quite well. It adds new empires and new cards. It changes combat. It makes combat more fun. You have combat units now where you can spread across and change how the combat rules work. It makes combat more, more satisfying and more strategic. It was quite basic and quite stripped down and quite plain original game but this expansion adds a bit more depth to, this, to the combat mechanics you also get an extra row of cards on your board um, the irrigation cards and also special cards per leader too so you might find that after a while you want to get an expansion and I highly recommend getting Terra Incognita it's quite cheap and it fixes a lot of problems in the base game next on the list is Root the Underground Expansion there's a lot of expansions for Roots, there's River Folk, the New Marauders one, there's a Clockwork expansion, there's the Hirelings box. But the Underground release is my favourite one for this game, and here's why. First of all, it adds two more powerful factions. Now the factions it adds, the Moles and the sort of Ravens, are really, really good. They're both equally very powerful, not too hard to use, really fun to use though, which is one of the most important factors, they're very fun to use. Not too hard for new players, I've had new players use these, have no problem at all with the factions. The Corby Conspiracy uses sort of bomb tokens and set of trap sort of uses traps across the board, very simple. And the mole faction has sort of like a burrow and you can place buildings down and uses these cards and you can upgrade cards and get extra powers. And the more cards you play, the stronger you are and you get bigger and bigger and bigger and stronger as the game goes on. And it also adds two new boards, a double sided board, the underground area and the lake area. And these are both really fun, they add a lot more to the game. The lake is a great, it's a big lake in the center and a big curvy outside map area of a boat you can use across the center to go across the underground map is also fun on a blocked off route so makes it more tactical more strategic makes it a lot harder but you also have a little sort of tower unit in the center if you hold that unit if you rule that area sorry you get points in the rounds so it makes a, a, a fancy battle to the center of the board it's just one of the best expansions you can get because river folk is okay but i find the river folk faction very hard to use same lizard folk they're good factions, but they're very, very hard to use, especially for new players. River Folk adds some new cards, of course, but I find the boards more fun. Marauders is a great expansion, really fun. The Hallings are great. The Lords of the Hundred are great. The Keepers and the Iron are great. But I just find the factions in this one a lot better to use. More fun, more powerful, more user-friendly, more accessible. And the boards are also great too. They add a lot more replay value to already fun and playable game. Next up is Aldrich Horror, Forsaken Law. Now, much like the Arkham Horror release, this is sort of like, makes the game more full. It fills the game out more. What it does is, it doesn't add a lot more complexity or mechanics, but it just it gives you a bit more content to make the game more replayable. Now, the game has a lot of content. It's got three ancient ones, 
a lot of characters, a lot of asset cars, artifacts, and monsters and stuff. But Forsaken Lord just adds just an extra little bit into the box to make it just more, much more fun. It adds just enough content that the game not sort of overflow with complexity and too much setup, but it adds enough so the game more replayable. When you find the core box, you might see the same kind of cards over again, the same Mythos cards. With Forsaken Lore, you do get more, more variety, you get a lot more of each of these cards. It makes the game much more replayable and much more fun. The Ancient One, Yig, is very fun too, adds uh, a lot more combat, the cultists and serpent folk, a lot more fighting going on. Next on the list is Marvel Champions, and this is quite a hard one because there's a lot of releases for Marvel Champions, and really it's a case of what heroes do you like, what heroes do you want. Now some are better than others, I'll be honest, some are worse, some are, some are stronger, some are better solo, some are better multiplayer, some are better support. And we also have a few big box releases of campaigns. Um, I'd recommend, the best one for me is probably Sinister Motives, it's the best release so far. We've already had Rise of the Red Skull, uh, Galaxy Most Wanted and the Mad Titan Shadow. Rise Red Skull's great, you've got a lot of good villains in there, um, but the heroes weren't that great. Hawkeye and Spider Woman, they aren't that great really. The villains are fine, but Red Skull's decent, um, Zola's pretty tough, but nothing that memorable really. Now, Galaxy Most Wanted is infamously extremely difficult. The villains in that game are very hard, and Ronan the Accuser is completely broken. Um, insanely hard to beat and it just makes the game not very fun you just can't beat Ronan unless you've got a super powerful team of players and you try over and over and over again it's just not fun it's very very hard and the heroes too Rocket and Groot, I mean I love Rocket and Groot's characters but as heroes to play they're just not good, they just don't feel fun Mad Titan Shadow had a great campaign, the campaign felt good the rewards were great, the villains while tough weren't too broken, it was fun to play through the villains were great, um, Thanos, his Black Order, Hela, Loki, they were strong, especially the last few were very tough, definitely, with the Infinity Gauntlet, but they weren't broken, you could beat them, there were strategies to it. The problem with this though is the heroes were very, very weak, Spectrum just was pretty, pretty bland to play as, Adam Warlock was okay, but it's just so risky to use and pretty wacky, it's just, the heroes didn't make up for the box itself. I would have wished we had Guardian Heroes with this one, like Gamora or Star-Lord, but that's just the way it goes. But Sinister Motives has the best of both worlds. It has a great campaign, it has really fun Spider-Man villains like Venom and the Sinister Six and Goblin and stuff. And it also has two great heroes, Ghost Spider, um, it's a really fun hero, very very defensive. And also Miles Morales is a very fun hero too, his abilities, his Venom Blast, his camouflage, his tough state, his cars, and stun, very very good. So Santa Motives is one I recommend very, very much getting. If you're going to go for heroes and want pure power, i go for Captain America, Doctor Strange, Gamora, Scarlet Witch. Those are the best ones. The problem with Marvel Champions is you might see a hero and think, oh, I want that hero. I like that hero. They're going to be good. Not always the case. I mean, Hulk. I like Hulk, but as a character, he's notoriously quite bad. Um, it's like, I like Star-Lord, but as a character, he's okay, but he's very, very risky and it's very hard to play as. So it's one of the ones where, yes, get heroes you like, but do a bit of research first of what heroes are the better ones to use. But I would recommend Sinister Motives, and those four heroes definitely are worth getting. Next up, it's Spirit Island with Branch and Claw. Now, as you know, Spirit Island is one of my favorite property of games. The core box alone has so much replay value, so many spirits and adversaries and scenarios and cards and ways to win, paths to take. So you might think an expansion isn't really worth getting. Well, I hate to say, Branch and Claw is definitely worth getting. It's a cheap small box expansion. It adds two new spirits, which are both equally very, very powerful and fun to play as. But it adds two new mechanics to the game will make the game so much more fun. You have the beast tokens and the event cards. Now beast tokens, those new tokens, they get placed down and they get placed down with spirits and cards. And they add new things like reduce damage in areas, prevent combat, prevent building, prevent exploring. They add a lot more strategy to the game and a lot more depth to already pretty in-depth game. And the event cards, um, one of the complaints Spirit Island I heard is it's very predictable. Because of the invader board and the cards, you can see what's coming. You know where they're going to go next. You know where they're going to attack next and build next. Well, here's the fix to that. Event cards. These add a lot more randomness to the game. 
change things up on the fly. They can benefit you. They can hinder you. They add a lot more um, unpredictability to the game. You might think everything's going okay. Event come might come along and just throw a spanner in the works. You might be struggling. And you get an event card. It can help you at the last second. So it adds a lot more fun to the game. I wouldn't say it's required for the game. If you don't play it that much, it isn't required. But if you play the game and you enjoy the game, and you think, should I get an expansion? Is it worth getting something for this game? I recommend Branch and Claw. That's when you know an expansion for a game is great, when it adds some new mechanics and new things to a game, and after you play them, you don't want to play back to the original again. You want to keep those mechanics in at all times. Next up is Lost Ruins of Arnak, and this is Expedition Leaders. Now, Lost Ruins of Arnak is a big sort of worker placement, debt building uh, game, Indiana Jones, Uncharted style theme where you explore an island, you place workers, you know, you sort of escape sites, defeat guardians, research things, collect cards, get a stronger deck. Uh, it's already a great game with a lot of depth to it, but here's this release does. Not only does it add new guardians, new research board, um, new cards, but it adds unique player powers. And these elevate the game from a great game to an amazing game. What these do is, each so what happens is normally you just get a basic board and everyone has the same cards, the same uh, four cards and the fear cards are starting deck. But with the leaders pack, you get unique player powers, unique cards. Each player gets a unique player board with tokens and unique cards, unique to that player and that character. And they all behave differently. Um, one guy's an extra worker. I have someone who has like a falcon token that goes on the board and charges up and can use certain rewards. Uh, one guy uses fear cards, collects more fear cards, more rewards, so it's quite risky. But it just adds a bit more replayability. You want to play something else. Every time you play the game, you think, oh, I want to use that, use that player power, I want to use that player again. But it just adds a lot more replayability to the game. I mean, when you play it now, you don't want to play the basic cards again. You want to use the leaders. You want to use someone different and use the unique powers to get a higher score. You want to use their deck and try and do different tactics and try and work their deck better and understand how they work and figure them out and get better scores. So that's what I mean with Spirit Island expansions. Once you use this expansion, you don't want to go back to the original. You don't want to go back to play without it again. It's just that good. And last on my list is an expansion for Terraforming Mars. It is Prelude. Now, Prelude doesn't add much. It's a tiny box. It does add a few new cards, Brit and Corporations. But it adds Prelude cards. What you do is, to start the game, you get dealt four and pick two. And all these cards do is give you a little slight boost, just a slight push into the game. Extra income, extra resources, an extra ability, an extra card, just little things that help out. And what it does is it makes all players jump into the game a lot faster. The game gets going quicker. People start playing cards more, building their engines faster. It makes the game just kick into high gear quickly. With Terraforming Mars, at least for the first three or four turns, you aren't doing much because your resources are so low. There's not many cards you can play. You can't get a good engine going with your energy or your heat or your um, green tiles. And what this does is it gives you that slight push out the door. You can get into the game faster. You can get your resources going quicker. Play cards quicker. Get the game going quicker. Get higher scores. And because there's quite a few prelude cards and corporations, it's fun to mix and match and combine up certain cards and get certain crazy scores and crazy abilities going on. Like certain corporations that work better with, I don't know, Water tiles. You might go for prelude court cards that give you starting bonus of water tiles and get you going a lot quicker. Or you might have a certain corporation that has a benefit of placing greenery tiles. And you might find prelude cards that help each of these corporations just go a lot faster and get into the game quicker. It's one of those releases where, after playing with prelude, I found players just don't want to play about it. The extra boost is just so much more fun. Now you might think it unbalances the game or makes the game a bit less even. Well, not really, because they're all they're all great. They're all great in their own way. Some add money, some add income, some leave you abilities, some you know just all increase certain ways, certain parameters in different ways. So give each player a unique take on certain things, and it also helps players get into the game quicker and get certain things they want. Because if they start off with say I don't know an energy income boost, they might go for energy income boost cards and work on that first. So it gives all players a more focused drive in the first half of the game, especially. And that's what makes Prelude so great. It doesn't add too much to the game in content wise, but for a low price, you get this little expansion that makes the game so much more fun and for everyone really. And after playing with it, you don't want to play without it. 
And that is it for my top 10 board game expansions list. Let me know in the comments down below anything you think I missed off for these games or any expansions on games you might think I'd like or any games you think I'd like based on this list. Um, as always, like and subscribe and thank you for watching.